Kira we are going to receive our mother. Mama. Mother, she's Apotre. a mother. Apostle. Mama Domitira. Mama Domitira. This is her last day. Let's God called her and used her to bless the people of God. She will feed us. God called her and used her to She will feed us. This afternoon. This afternoon. Karibu, Mama. You're welcome. May God bless you. You may take your seats. Thank you very much. I receive you in the name of Jesus. Feel at home and keep enjoying this moment in the house of God. You started with us and we have come to an end together. And may joy abound in your hearts. Please keep showing me love. It's a short time, it's brief. But I'll be saying my farewell. But please keep me in your hearts. May God bless you. Man of God, may God bless you. I got blessed from you. To receive the microphone and minister here for this time, it's not easy. There are some who take this as something ordinary. But for someone to trust you and give you the microphone to speak to the people in his church, yes, this is the church of Christ. But we are shepherds in the place of Jesus. So this is not a regular blessing for every person. I thank you very much and may God bless you. I believe we are together in this moment. I couldn't come in the morning. Because of my old age, I couldn't wake up. I felt very tired. But I followed Apostle's teaching online. May God bless you. Repent and you'll be forgiven your transgressions. That you may be refreshed again. I followed the sermon and I believe I was forgiven my transgressions as well. How many believe their sins were forgiven? May God bless you. Because if you think you have no sin, you are lying to yourself. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned. And all have fallen short of the glory of the Lord. But I thank God that he has restored us and refreshed us. May Jesus bless you. I think I'm still standing well and strong and the microphone is where it is supposed to be may God bless you we were in the week of repentance. And we are going to close the week of repentance. I thank God that I'll carry on with you. Wherever I will be. Next week I'll be in Zion. May God bless you. So today. 
the morning they told us that when you live in sin, you are dead. But when you repent, you get refreshed and restored. Nothing can stop us from entering the kingdom of heaven besides sin. But if you repent and know that you've been forgiven and you walk away from sin, heaven is close to you. Today we will go to heaven. And this is heaven that I've talked about all this time. And this is where I will close. May God bless you. Let's go to the book of Philippians. 3.20 Three Philippians 320. Philippians Amen. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. First Thessalonians 4.16 Abatesarinoke Amen. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Because I don't like to read a lot. Let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Because my message is around these verses. Second Thessalonians two. Verse five. To eleven. Nekadusome. Hingibuka Wongami Yesu Kristo azichisha umukuva mukanwake akamutsembesha kuboneka kukuza kwe kuza kuwo mugome kuri mu buryo bwo gukora kwa satani gufite imbaraga zose n'ibimenyetso n'ibitangaza by'ibinyoma n'ubuhenzi bwose bwo gukiranirwa kubarimbuka kuko batemeye gukunda ukuri ngo bakizwe nicyo gituma imana izaboherereza ubushukanyi bukomeye cyane Ngo bizere ibinyoma kugira ngo abatize iby'ukuri bose bakishimira gukiranirwa bacirweho iteka amen amen 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. Go to verse 12 as well and read it. Kwa nguwa chumina kabiri. Arabu wango kujira ngo abatize, abatize yidi ukuribo ose. Banzo hagara. Kujira ngo abatagize guti. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. Bagira guti. What will happen to them? Wakishi mira guchira nirugwa. Bachirigo ho iteka. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mighty God in heaven. I thank you for this day at noon. You have allowed me to stand before the saints. Those that you chose. And took from the darkness. And showed them the light that shows their path. And you have allowed me to stand in front of them. God, I have nothing better than that. And there is nothing I can tell them. But I ask you, who are you that you may stand with me and share with them what you want to tell them? I do not know how to speak. But I am standing in your spirit that you may borrow my body and speak what you want to tell me. And then help them understand and pay attention. I thank you for the God who listens and who performs. Let all the glory return to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say Amen. May God bless you. I thank God for enabling me to be with you this whole week. I thank God for the pastors who trusted me and gave me this time. And I thank God for being with me throughout the whole week that I ministered. I have seen pastors I know and some I do not know. But may God bless each one of you. I believe I spoke to you all that I needed to tell you. I didn't study the Bible. I didn't go and do theological studies. I cannot give you a sermon as apostle can do. But my university graduation is what I shared with you throughout the week. If you received it well, may God bless you. If you have a concern, I am available. You can ask me regarding all that I say. And I'll be able to respond if you ask regarding what I talked about. But if you ask me beyond what I said, I will not give you an answer. Because I say as I was told, and if you followed well, they told me do not add and do not reduce. If we told you fingers, you will say fingers. If we say a finger, you will say a finger. So please do not put me into problems and ask me what I didn't say. So the difficult questions reserve them for apostles. He is the one who studied further and has more answers from the scriptures. May God bless you. I told you how I moved to Jesus. And all the words I read, I cannot explain as it is. 
Because what I have inside my heart is a lot. I told you how I died. I told you how I went to heaven. I told you how I moved through the heavens. I told you how I saw the fire that awaits the sinners. I have told you everything. Last night someone asked me, he said there is somewhere you didn't mention you didn't tell us about how they asked you why you pray in the name of Mary she's the mother of Jesus why does God refuse us from praising her and the response is I told her they refused me from praying in the name of Mary. They told me do not pray again in the name of Mary or any other saint for that matter. But when you go to pray, you will pray God the Father in the name of Jesus. That's all that you need to do. They didn't tell me any other saint I could pray in the name of Yes. They didn't talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus. They told me, God the Father, in the name of Jesus. And you will make your request known. May God bless you. And I have responded Maria to that. Mary is a person like us. She was blessed to carry our Lord in her womb. But she has no place, according to the scriptures, to pray for you. Because when you die, it is done. You will be judged according to your works. Because we will all present ourselves before God. And every, everyone will be rewarded according to their works. Let me not talk more about that because I said it. Today I want to talk about my return. I told you that when we had finished the whole journey, the man who was a giant that I saw, the one that I couldn't face, told the two men to take me back. I tried to cry, but I couldn't stop them. But they took me and pushed me back. They took me to the same place I left my court. May God help me that I may share with you how I saw the body. And this is my closing remarks. When I woke up from that place, I told you that I started serving God. It was in 1968. We were going into 1969. I kept serving God. Then I got sick. I went to the hospital. In Uvira at the general hospital. They operated me. I believe it was in 1972 or 73. I don't remember the dates. You bear with me. They operated me in my womb. I was sick. And I got healed. I kept serving God. Then the following day, I had a problem. What problem did I have? It was a problem to do with the people we worked together. The life of the world, people stood to fight me. People stood to fight me. And they, so, they said so many words against me. How can a married woman who has a husband and the dowry has been paid 
But she's always on the road. She leaves her husband. It became a very big problem. To the point it reached in the church. I was in the Methodist church. They said that woman has to be suspended. It is not approved according to the law to leave your husband for a whole year I would go and stay on the road for 12 months. And I would, I would explain it like how I'm just closing my week here. And then they send me to Burundi. And then in Congo they call me. Or I go to another place. I wouldn't check days. For me it was about the work. I still had the fragrance of heaven. Are you listening? If we are together, raise your hand. May God bless you. I reached the point where I felt tired because of the words hurled at me, because of my family, because of the family of my husband, because of the people who were with me in the ministry. They all became a heavy burden for me. I felt that I was going to give up. It was in 1974, 1975. I told God. I said, God, we need to agree on I felt so scared I couldn't walk away from the ministry. Because there is something God told me. And God told me, you are going back, but do not sit. Move all over the world and share this message. And I'll open doors before you. May God bless you. But then I, I reached a point. Let me tell the brothers and sisters here, support people who have been called to the ministry. Do not be the people who discourage them. But rush to support them. That's what God loves and that's why you are here. He didn't bring you to fill this hole. But he brought you to support this vision. To support the vision God has given his servant. But sometimes the problem we have. And it's not even a surprise. Even Jesus Christ. He was fought by the priests. He was fought by those who worked with him. So it is not extraordinary. But we pray that everyone will know why they were called. I told God I'm tired. I can't do this. If you want me to carry on, carry these burdens for me. Reduce the heaviness of this world so that I may walk well. When God has spoken, you cannot give him instructions. He will do his will. When he was responding to the pastor, he, he, he said, I love those whom I love. If I love Jacob, I love Jacob. Irrespective of his deceit. But I have loved Jacob. You need to love what God loves. You shouldn't love what you love. But you should love what God loves. 
May God bless you. In the night when I slept, I saw someone come. I speak to God in my dreams. When I, sleep. when I pray and sleep, and I repent my sins, and then I sleep, I see someone come to me. Ever since I began, I saw someone. To this day, when God wants to speak to me, there comes someone. If it is Jesus, if it is an angel, do not trick me by the words I will say. It's just a person. May God bless you. This person said, all the words you have said, they have been heard. What do you want? I said, I want God to reduce my problems. That God will see the battles I fight in the families and, and even the people in the ministry. I am heavy burden. If God would show me his mercy and help me with this burden, and this person said, is this all you want? I said, if God would do this, I would be happy. He brought a syringe and he came as if he was going to inject me. But it was in a dream. And I, I put myself on the side. I said, why do you want to inject me and I'm not sick? And he said, it's an injection to give you strength so that you will do what you have to do to speak and preach the gospel. That you will dwell with your husband in peace and do everything he desires and even make those who work with you happy. And that was comforting. I accepted and he injected me. It was in a dream. After I injecting me, instead of feeling strength, I felt discouraged. In my sleep, I kept moving. When I woke up, I found that my stomach had opened, gushed open, as if I had been operated. And when I went to see, it's like every organ in my stomach was out. As if you have operated a cow, a I saw all my organs out. Yet every organ was in its position. I became very scared. Then I saw blood flow. But before I saw my stomach open, where I was sleeping, I didn't know what happened. So I woke up. I woke my husband up. I told him the dreams I had received. And he said, you, always with your dreams, you dream all the things that you spent the day thinking about. I said, it's okay, but let's pray. It was very early in the morning. I felt discouraged. I stood up. I took the water to the bathroom. We used to shower outside, not these days where everything is modern. So I took water in a saucepan. I love saying the truth of what I've been through. So I went where young cows would be. In, that's where we used to take our showers. When I reached in that bathroom outside, before I took off the clothes, this time I was awake. It's not a dream. When I was going to take a shower, I saw 
thunders, lightning, heavy lightning, as if it was about to rain, I saw lightning, but in the lightning someone came, this person had a sharp edged sword, I was not asleep, I was going to take a shower in the bathroom, and this person came with a sword, I saw them come and cut me, and then this person left again in the lightning. The place I was standing, I, I screamed. I started bleeding, gushing as I had seen it. And I, my husband, whenever he would try to rise, he would fall back in the bed. Because of the screaming, he couldn't wake up. But it's the neighbors who came to save me. I screamed out. Let me tell you. It is breaking my heart. There is a place I went. And they say, Domitira is teaching there. It is me, Domitira. So have I become a ghost I that I'm teaching in, two different, different, teaching in two different places? They say, Domitira, who died and raised, from the dead is I told those people, take me to where that Domitila is teaching. Do not copy a message of someone else. I ask you in the name of Jesus. It is terrible. And this is the reason why. When we follow apostle preaching, and then you take his message and preach it as if it is your own. It is a problem to those who follow the message. May God bless us. Let me come back to my point. I found a woman preaching saying that my name is Navivone Domitira and all the things she saw in heaven. I sat and looked at her in shock. This pastor was a white person. And this person said, what is going on? Go and, and insult her because this is wrong. I said, I can't do that. Because I won't be different from her. And this pastor said, how shall we tell the difference between the real Domitira and the fake one? I said, that is not for us to know. But after the message I took her. I asked her, are you Domitila Navivone? She said, yes. Who is your father? Who is your mother? From which family? She started sweating. Do not fight them. Forgive them and move on. If you want, you can clap your hands. So when this person had already cut my stomach open, blood started flowing from the bathroom all the way outside. People found me lying down. They carried me to the house. After putting me down, they brought garments and tied me, trying to tie my body. Everyone. They were in a place called Gahuna. In Bijombo. Bijombo. It is in Bijombo. Bijombo. And in the middle there, Na Chanzovu, Namasata. places like Chanzovu Na and Masata. Na Na yeah. <laughs> May God bless you. 
So those people who know me are there. If they were to raise their hand, you would see them. May God bless you. So they called everyone. We were with Catholics. A man called Semangwa. He was a teacher in a Catholic school. He also came. Everyone came. They saw with their eyes. When you give testimonies, give witness. Because we are living in the end time. You need to give facts of what you're saying. They will treat you as someone who is making up stories. So everyone came. They came to see the wound I had. Someone who was operated. In 1972. And then the wound opens in 1974, entering 1975. Would you say that the wound is still live for three years? Even if it would be still a live wound, they bound me. Then they carried me. They took me to the general hospital. I've been carried to the hospital twice. With the beds, those beds that they carry people. I was carried the first time when we had gone to pray and I died. But this time they carried me to the hospital in Uvira. I was carried by many people. I used to be bigger than I am. Ever since I was born, I've always been overweight. I was overweight. Even now, I'm still overweight. There are some who feel insecure because they are overweight, but I'm proud of my body. May God bless you. So they took me to the hospital. Everyone said, take her to the hospital. They carried me. We went through Kagogo. And went through different areas, but I was carried by many people. I think there were around 100 people. They were all taking me to Uvira. We went. When we reached Kachaga, May God bless you. They were going from mountain to mountain heading to Vira. So they reached the market in Nyamuja. We were heading into some of the mountains heading to Vira. I was still on that bed. That I saw the other man come back. When he came near me, he looked at me and laughed. But again, he wasn't really laughing. He looked like he was smiling. And he said, what happened? And I said, why are you asking, yet you see my state? He said, what happened to you? I said, aren't you the one who injected me and then opened my wound? And now you're asking me what happened to me. I was on that bed. I was talking to this person. But the others were not listening. I love Jesus. So I asked him, why are you asking me then? He said, what happened to you? I said, you made me like this. You opened my stomach wide open. He said, nothing has happened to you. You refused to do what I called you to do and you chose to do what stopped you to minister. 
You chose to rejoice with your husband. You chose to make your colleagues in the ministry happy. I say, and he said, you can now go back and do those things. And I said, I can't do it because I'm sick. He said, you chose that over ministry. I said, listen to me. The Bible says, come and let's seek counsel. Though your sins may be red as crimson, they can be cleansed and they, you become pure as snow. May God bless you. I asked him, can you forgive me? And heal this wound. And once I'm healed, I will not refuse to go and minister. He said, tell the truth. If this wound is healed, you will refuse again to go and preach. I said, if I'm healed now, I'll stand up right now and go to preach the gospel. I will preach until the day God will call me back. Let's seek counsel. The reason, the problem we have is that we don't listen to God's voice. So when I accepted, he said, you agree and you approve that you will not bring problems again in your calling. That you will not listen to the voices in your ears, the people complaining. People who stop you from doing the work that I sent you to do. I swore. And I said, those voices will never have a place in my life. That man stretched his hand and touched my wound. He pressed three times. He pressed and pressed again and for the third time he said do you know what your wound is healed you might as well raise your hands for Jesus may God bless you he said rise up from the bed your wound is healed I thought about myself. I had doubt. I felt that maybe I'm not healed. I said, let me touch myself just to be sure. I couldn't speak. I couldn't move. I was like a dead person. I kept quiet. People kept carrying me to the hospital. This person was very angry and came back. And he said, I told you that you are healed. <laughs> and now you want people to keep carrying you, yet I healed you. If they make five more steps and they are carrying you, I will open the wound again and this time your intestines will be collecting dust. I told the people, put me down, put me down. <laughs> and others said, let's rush, nightfall is coming. We have experience enough to tell you what we are telling you. I said, please put me down, put me down. There were, we had pastors. We were with one of the pastors who was here We were with Pastor Ruka Gatwale and others. Some I do not remember. Ruka Gatwale said, put her down. She wasn't speaking and now she's speaking, put her down. 
put her down. So they put me down. I said, open my stomach. But I didn't tell them that I was healed. Because I was also doubting. She said, untie me, untie me. They untied me. I said, remove those garments that you used to tie me. They untied me. Then I said, help me rise up. They helped me rise up. When I stood up, I took off the clothes. I checked. Then I showed everyone. My stomach had been brought back together. May God bless you. My whole stomach had been healed. The only thing you could see was the blood that had been shed around, it. around the wound. But the wound had been brought back together. Well together. May God bless you. So I stood and I raised my hand. Everyone fell down. We spent a whole hour all kneeling down, crying and praying to God. We said, God, what is this? Let me accept. The wound that was opened. Because I had been operated prior to that. Let me accept that maybe I had an accident and the wound opened again. But healing before you get to the hospital. And you become well and rise up and move. Everyone repented. We thought that Jesus was coming back. Everyone would go on the side and repent their sins. People got saved. The sinners repented. They knelt down and repented their sins. Then I told them, let's go back home. They took the bed and took, took it apart. And we all went back home. We spent a night in one place. And they slayed two cows. When they saw people coming back, they thought I had died. But then they saw me coming before the people walking. When God shows up, Amen. Amen. I will not beg you to get saved. I will not beg you to repent. It is for your good that you repent. I will not beg you to seek God and know him. It is for your own good. I know God. And I have chosen to follow him. So we spent a night in one place. And then the next day we went to our home. People came from all over the areas around that place. But let me tell you a word they told me when I was on the bed. The man told me, before I heal you and help you rise, come and let's talk. Yet I I was sleeping on the bed. He said, come, let's talk. So it looked like I was coming from a house when you are in the body, in the flesh, it's as if you are in the house. This body is like a house. And it is like a court. This body is not the man. It's not you. You are the inner being, the inner person. So do not waste your time on the body. It's a court that is housing the essence of you. 
So I saw him take me. He told me, I'll tell you two things. I'll tell you what stops you from serving God. Some are saying that Jesus is not coming soon. But we still have time to serve God. We still have time to get saved. We still have time to repent. And he told me that statement offends God. He said, come and I show you how Jesus is nigh. That's the word we read. So he took me. Then I saw the cloud open, the clouds open up with angels. I saw that the clouds had become full of angels. And they were and they were all like angels. Everyone had their trumpet in their hands. They were like soldiers going for a battle. They had their shoes ready. They were all dressed up. Like how soldiers go to fight. And they all had their capes on. And they had trumpets and weapons. And I saw the whole clouds turn into angels. Then I saw something like an ark. Then I saw the Lamb of God in the ark. And then he raised his hand over the ark. Then I saw the ark release rays. The rays would come from the ark and reach the earth. And I saw everyone on earth fall as if dead. And when the rays would touch them, they would all rise up and go into the ark. But others were looking for them. May God bless us. When it seems like you can see, actually you're blind in the spirit. But you could be blind and, and able to see in the spirit. When it looks like you're dead, you are actually alive. In the spirit, you will die. The Bible says, I died with Christ. Paul said, I died with Christ and I rose with Christ. Amen. Amen. He said, it is not me who lives, but it is Christ who lives through me. May God bless you. He said, Jesus is coming. When someone sits and rises up, what is left? They have to move. When someone chooses the path to follow and move, what is left? They have to reach their destination. Yes. Jesus rose. Yes. Jesus is standing. Yes. Jesus is on the door coming. And the one who rose to move will not sit until they have reached their destination. Yes. So Jesus is coming. And he is at the door. Number two. You always say that the Antichrist will not come. That we still have time. We have time. The Antichrist will not come. He told me, let me show you the Antichrist has been born. He took me to a red sea, but very large sea. By the sea, I saw something like a beast. But when I observed, I saw 
One part of it was buried under the earth. By the lake, by the sea. I became scared. And the man told me, open your eyes and see. And then I saw the beast move and gather its strength. Then I saw it birth. It birthed a child who looked human. It had a beautiful baby. I started trembling. How can a beast birth a baby that looks human? The man said, watch and see. After birthing the baby, I saw it move again. It breathed upon the baby. And the baby started growing. The baby grew. The baby grew. The baby grew. In a few minutes, the baby became a grown man before my eyes. Once he became a grown man, I saw that the baby was not man anymore. The baby became a snake. The man became a snake. It had three paintings. The first color, it was white, pure white. I trembled. Then again it, to, it turned into another color. It was red like this carpet. The third color, it turned black. But it was still a snake. And the man told me, what have you seen? I told him, what I am seeing, you can see it. He said, those are the things you say. That the Antichrist is not born yet. I wanted to show you that he has already been born. He is and he's moving in the world. As you saw him birthed by a beast, it's not a beast that birthed him. His parents are not beasts. But the Antichrist has been born. He was born in a, in a evil way. And that evil way is likened to the beast you saw. The way you saw the beast breathe upon the baby. And the baby grew up immediately and became a man. The Antichrist has been born. The Antichrist is operating on and this earth. He is working. And there are even his servants in this earth who will market his life and his way of being. So the Antichrist is there. But he's working mysteriously with great knowledge because no one can easily tell who he is. But he is working mysteriously. But the day he will openly move he will become like the snake. He will be very intelligent like a snake. No one will be able to know who he is. Number two, the way the, the, the beast breathed upon the child and became an adult, the Antichrist will not work alone. And he will not make himself he, he will work with the voices of God many people who are great and powerful. They will give him the strength to perform the miracles he will perform. That is the breath that raised him up. The next point. 
when he starts to work, he will call himself holy. That was the white color you saw. When he starts working, openly, he will call himself holy. He will appear a saint. He will have power. He will have love. He will draw many people to himself. And many people will call him the Christ. Because he will try to solve the problems of people. He will try to solve problems in this world. And people will say he is the Christ, the Son of God. That is the white color you saw. The third color you saw, which is red, he will shed the blood of the saints. Even though he will come as if he's a man of peace, he will shed the blood of the saints. The third color, which is black, he will be the most wicked man, which is the color black. The Red Sea that you saw. It shows that he will have a lot of strength. On earth, but in the end, he will end being thrown in the sea. And that sea was created for Satan, demons, and the false prophets. As you saw the beast bound one part, it shows that he is there, but he's still bound. He can be released to perform his works for as long as the church is still on earth. This is what we read in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 5. May God bless you. I will not say much. Then he finished and told me, go and tell people the message I gave you. Go and add these words. Go and tell people that this is the time to serve God. The time to repent is now. The time of sanctification is now. Time has come and time is near. This is what Jesus told the Samaritan woman. The one they had met at the well. When they were discussing, one asking for water, the other one giving water of life. He said, you woman. Time has come. And it is here. Where you you will not go to pray in the mountain. But you will pray in the truth and in the spirit. May God bless you. Listen to the word of God. And keep it in your hearts. He took me back. He took me back to the bed where I was sleeping. And he said, go back to the... He, he took me back to the house I had left. I thought we entered the body together. But I went back to my body. And I found myself laying on the bed. That's when everything else happened. We went back home. Let me close on this. When we went back home, I spent two days. Then the third day, I went to preach the gospel. I spent 12 months without returning back home. Why? I had seen God bless you. Moses told God, if I have found favor in your sight, 
tell me who you are. And he tell me the name. He said, if I have found favor in your sight, tell me your plans. God said, even that I will do. They didn't discuss anymore with God. God would speak and Moses would hear. Moses would speak and God would hear. There was no distraction or discussion. The day I was opened, and then God healed me before I reached the hospital. I believe I committed more to the Lord. Let me tell you because I have no shame. Because I am heading to paradise each single day. My time to be tempted by the world came to an end. I am 75 years now. I do not have youth blood. Or I'm not like a young person anymore. May God bless you. I went back home. And I did the work of God. From that day. To this day, I do not argue with God anymore. When he speaks, I listen and obey. And when I speak, he listens. We are one. There is someone who cannot say it. Who think that what will happen tomorrow if I say this? I am going to heaven. I have no fear or shame. If you want, you can come with me. Or you can stay behind. I have no time to beg you. Apostle will beg you. Because he is your pastor. And if he doesn't do it, God will ask him. That's why you make it difficult for him. But I have no time to beg you and waste time with you. Because the Bible says, from the time of John the Baptist to this day, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. May God bless you. And I carried on in the ministry to this day. And as I'm aging, but I'm aging in Jesus because I have been planted as a vine. I was a branch, but now I am on the vine, connected to the vine. I am grafted to the vine. That's why today I move even in my old age but with strength. That they will be planted in the courts of the Lord. And they will flourish. And they will bear fruit even in their old age. Let me, let me give you a joke. I, I, if it was in 2015, God bless you. When I was celebrating 50 years in the ministry, I told them, may God bless you. I said all these things that I rejoice in when I tell you how I met presidents how I was in the presidential drive sometimes I might think I'm important it's a lie I walked with Jesus I was taken in the bosom of the Lord. I went under the shadow of God. Even when I thought that I was important, I 
But I was covered in the hands of God. If you would have taken his hands off of me, I would have died. And that's not even a miracle. An ant went to an elephant. And when it was about to cross a bridge, it went to the back of the elephant. And as the elephant was moving on the bridge, and the elephant screamed, the ant screamed. <laughs> And the ant said, me and the elephant shook the bridge. Me and the elephant have shaken the bridge. But the ant was on the back of the elephant. I can tell you that I have shaken this world. Because I was hidden in the Lord. Under the shadow of the most high. And what I'm telling you, we belong to heaven. Where we wait for our redeemer to come who come to transform our bodies and glorify our bodies according to his glory. May God bless you. Because we are going home and home is heaven. And we are waiting for the Lord to return. My brother, my sister, let us go to heaven. Let us go to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. May God bless you. He said, as there is a promise, you should be afraid that no one will die without taking hold the promise. May God bless you. Let us go to heaven. Let's leave the world behind. I know you have repented your sins. And I know the Lord has forgiven you. Let us focus on heaven. Let's stop sinning. Let's come back to Jesus. And he will draw us close to him. May God bless you. Do not rush to speak. Do not rush to do things to appear strong. Once you know that it is not you who lives, but Jesus through you, you will humble yourself and you will do God's will. May God God bless you. But if you harden your heart, you will read the word in 2 Thessalonians, verse 2, carrying on and up to 5. But because they didn't want to follow the truth, and they didn't do what God desired, God will harden their hearts so that they will be judged. God can do that. When you harden your heart, God comes and hardens it even more. God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He can harden your heart as well. But there is still time. There is still time to repent. We still have grace. There is a day there will not be grace. And he will go back to Israel. You remain like fish that have, that have been brought out of the sea. You will call upon the Lord and you will not see him. You will cry and no one will hear you. You will go everywhere seeking for the word. Because you harden your hearts. And refuse to repent. And refuse to turn your ways to God. God will harden your hearts. So that you reach a time where you will cry and no one will hear you. 
I conclude by saying, let us go to heaven. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them I will go to heaven. I will go to heaven. Ask them, where will you go? Tell them where you will go. Let us go to heaven. I am closing and I'm giving you my farewell as Mama Domitila is standing here remain seated Mama I wanted to share my testimony how I had, how I had my child. God bless you, Apostle. You are a servant of God. Amen. Amen. When I saw people, when, when I saw children in heaven, I asked them, where is God? They asked, why do you want to see God? I told them, I have something to tell him. They told me, speak, God will hear you. I said, if I'm in heaven, I can't speak to the God I do not see. Because he's in heaven, and I'm in heaven, I have to see him and tell him. When the man saw that I was determined, that I was determined, he said, you don't know what the scriptures say. Those who see me have seen the Father. That's why I said this is Jesus. But he didn't say I am Jesus. Those who see you have seen the Father. You must be Jesus Christ. I said my only pain is that I don't have a child. Now God in heaven should give me a child. He said, that's all I'm asking for. I needed so much, but I asked for one thing. God bless you. I came back. I'll testify what God, I testified what God had told me. And I told them that God promised me a child. And I had waited for 11 years without a child. Hey. 11 years. Maybe you have the same problem. And you're praying that nothing is happening. And you're asking yourself and you have no answer. And remember I told the angel why did they beat me and you didn't save me. And the angel said if they beat you did they kill you. You are still here. I remembered what the angel had told me. I waited for 11 years. When we were going into the 12th year, God gave me a child. I asked for a child. He gave me only one child. Maybe if I would have asked for many children, he would have given me many children. But the Bible says, he can do exceedingly above and beyond what we ask for. You would think that I couldn't have conceived more. But God created me afresh, if I should say. And he do it. He did it for Sarah and Hannah. And I think that's what happened to me. When I had my daughter, I thought I could conceive again. But I only have one child. God gave us an amazing child. A child who loves God. A child who is in the calling of God. Who preaches and makes me happy.
May God bless you. And she's the pastor of our church. Of the Lord. Ark of the Lord is the name of her church. And she's the one I've given my mantle. I have given her the mantle of my calling. I sit and watch her preach. If you have given your mantle to someone, do not take it from them. I just advise. But I can't take the mantle back. I've given her the mantle. And she will stand in the calling God has given me and preach the good news. I have closed. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's pray for her the journey she has. She has a book. It's in Four days in heaven. She has a book. But you'll find everything in this book. Of course, those who read English. When I started the ministry, I reached in Kinshasa. They wrote a book in Lingala. When I reached in France, they wrote a book in French. When I went to Canada, they wrote a book in English. It's the one I have in English. Those are books written by Mama Domiti. God brings destiny helpers. Partners that I may push to the destiny of God. In December. In December. I will launch my book in Zion. I will launch it in Kinyarwanda and you will sign. Let us pray for her. She preached. Her book was written by a great evangelist in the US and sold the book. She also bought it. A village woman. Being uneducated is a sin. They wrote my book and I couldn't have access to it. Even I bought it. So I told that man, I told him, this mother is my mother. He said, I've done business with her story. I asked for money. He said, I wrote for myself. There are others. They go and dress up like she is. All the things she was saying. And, and they call themselves Mama Domitil and they collect offerings from people. Because they go to white people. They can't tell the difference. Then they go calling themselves Apostle Mama Thousands and thousands of people come to listen. That's where she attended the conference and heard some other woman preach that she's Mama Domitil. 
the gospel of visitations in heaven is very rare. Not Uri many bwira. people have had those experiences. Niki chatumye imana imwima abana kugeza ku myaka 10 kwa ruko kugira ngo abanza akora ubutumwa nta nta kimutangira. Why do you think God refused her to have a child for 11 years? God wanted her to preach the gospel for 11 years because she could have a big... After reaching many places, God gave her Mahomi. I came to know her. I was a child. She would carry Mahomi everywhere. She would be with her daughter everywhere as she would be. They would have conferences. They would ask me to babysit her daughter. They liked to eat chicken, so they would cook chicken and leave it for the daughter. And I would be babysitting the daughter and I would be eating the chicken for myself. So babysitting allowed me to eat some good chicken. God couldn't give her many children. You need to understand that she said, People didn't approve the callings of women. The people didn't approve the callings of women. That's why God had to cut her off. That's why God, that's why God cut her open as a witness that she was called to serve the Lord. She showed you Pastor Samson. He was one of the pastors who carried her to the hospital. From Gahuna. From Gahuna. Uvira. To Uvira. It's a very far place. It's in the mountains. They were going down the mountains. The mountains. Carrying her, she was heavy and all her insides were out. Why? people were talking about her. Sometimes people will talk about you and you want to leave your calling. Do not accept what people say about you. But the more they talk about you, let it be the thing that pushes your anointing forward. Preach the gospel even more. When the family starts talking, they go to the husband. You don't have your wife. She's always moving. You see even the husband. You tell your husband, you tell your wife you will not leave tomorrow. You can't serve the Lord in the night. And then you had a fight with your husband. Even in the church you have problems. People are accusing you. Before we get married. Before we marry. We had the calling. There is no man. There is no woman. That should shut down your calling. Because you were born with a calling. Let no one stop your calling. Because it is you and God. Yes you live with your spouse. You have children. But before God. God will ask you what you did with your talent. You will not tell God. That my wife made me cover my talents. If you are married. Or not. Husband or not. Wife or not. It doesn't stop your calling and mission. Whether married or not, you still have your calling. When someone enters their calling, know that they are about to take on battles. Don't be among the people who attack their their But be among those who tell them, be strong we are together. Be strong we are together. Let's pray for Mama Domiti and bless her in the hands of God.
Uiteka mani kome ye. Mighty God. Tuzanye mama domiti le umaboko ya. We bring mama domiti in your hands. Uyu numwa potre wahamaga. She's an apostle that you call. Muri bihibza nyuma. In this end time. Kongera kupzusa itore. That she may rise the church. Gukangura imiti maya bakristo. That she may rise the hearts of the believers. Govita gure kukuje. That they get ready because you are coming. Uri munzira. You are coming. Uri hafi kuzza. You are nearby. Leka kongera tukite gure. Let us get ready. Tugutegereze. And wait for you. Kukigie kiragere. Because time has come. Give her the strength she needs in her body. Increase her anointing. In Burundi where she's going to preach. Turn the hearts of men. Let the Burundians turn to Let you. Let miracles happen. Use her to do great things. We thank you. That you've been faithful in her life. You have fed her. You have clothed her. You have strengthened her. Kugezu yumusi. Ichuwa ilo chao. Kigenda nenawe. Mwizi narja Yesu. Amen. Aliahidi atatenda tumainie. Kadu haguruke. Kama mvua, kama mvua, ishu kavyo. Doka mbinguni. Kwenye adhi na neno lake kwa kinywa chake halitarudi bure itatimiza mapenzi yake itatena aliyosema aliyahidi atatena tumani Kama mvua, kama mvua, ishu kavyo, toka mbinguni kwenye hati. Aneno lake, kwa kinwa chake, haitarudibu, itatimiza mapezi yake. Lita tena aliyose aliyahidi aliyahidi atatena to my knee Mani jambo rya we rikore icyarizanye Let your word accomplish its purpose mu mitima yacu in our hearts Uduhu mutima kugukore Give us a heart to serve you Ritera niyo ryose mwa This whole congregation dear Urikoreshe use it kugera ku mirimo yawe ikome That they may reach your great Turabasabira umugisha We are praying a blessing for them imbere advancing kugukorera serving you kuvuga ubutumwa speaking your good news muri ibi bihe turimo in this end time ni mwizina rya Yesu in the name of Jesus Amen. Mutahane na Yesu. Yesu abagirie neza. Gusa niba utarakizwa nutahe ngwino wakire Yesu abandi bagende ariko wezi hano wakire Yesu. If you haven't received Christ please come forward as we lead you in a prayer. Gwino. Tahaneni iman na kuwaka bini na kuwaka ne. Urubzi ruko umugoro ba mla tumiwe. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
shukavyo zaka mbinguni wenye hati na neno lake kwa kinwa chake alitarudi Hallelujah. Let us pray. We are going to pray for those who came to receive Jesus. Those on the radio, no those on TV, repeat this prayer and receive Jesus. We are going to pray now. Come quickly. Come. Come fast. Come quickly. We are going to pray. Come, come, come. If you're here and you want to come, please come. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Repeat, this Let us Repeat Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. Forgive me. I humble myself before you. Show me your mercy. I open my heart. Come in my heart. Be my king. Be my savior. The savior of my life. From today, I give you all my life. Lead it as you desire. I have determined myself to walk with you. Use me to do your will in the name of Jesus.